Hello and welcome back to Revise GCSE History. .co.uk. This is the fifth final video in the topic 20th century medicine, and in this video today we're going to be looking at the introduction and impact of the National Health Service, or the NHS as it's sometimes called today. So the National Health Service. Whoops. What am I doing? Health Service. That's supposed to be an L then a T. And in the book, in the textbook, the main white school history project book, I think it calls this bit of work liberal reforms, something like that. I think in a few of the exam specifications it's called that as well. But it's all the same thing, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know for this topic. So, recapping our last video, if you think back to the last video, we looked at this slide, and this explains how the government how uh, the government's role was really changed by the Second World War and how they uh, look to provide public health measures as a, as a result of the Second World War. I'm not going to actually talk through this slide again, but if this is a bit unfamiliar to you, you may wish to look at video 4 in the topic of uh, 20th century medicine as we go through this slide here in a bit more detail. But I did say this slide links into both video 4 and video 5, so as long as you're familiar with this, you should be able to understand and apply the knowledge we're going to go over in today's video to the wider context. Alright, so liberal reforms. During the early 1900s, the Liberals who were in charge of Britain took measures to improve the living conditions of British people. In the 1920s and 1930s, further improvements were made in housing, unemployment benefits and pensions. During the 1930s, Britain's economy experienced great difficulties. This was due to the Wall Street crash in 1929, when uh, America's stock market uh, experienced major difficulties and that really sort of ruined the world economy for a short while. There was very little money to spend on uh, extending the government's welfare services. That was sort of a uh, that was the last priority <laughs> at the time. So before the National Health Service and the National Health Service that we have today was introduced in 1948, and we're going to do just this slide here looks at what uh, treatments were available before the NHS. So before the NHS, people had to pay for treatment, whereas today it's all free and the NHS is government funded. This meant that only those who were rich received the best treatment. The poor could not afford proper treatment in hospitals and were often treated in workhouse infirmaries. Some services were provided by the government, whilst others were provided by private organisations, and the quality of treatment often varied. So that's before 1948 and before the introduction of the NHS. The Beveridge Report. Sir William Beveridge was a leading economist. And in 1941, he was asked by the wartime government, if you remember, this is during World War II, 1941. He was asked by the wartime coalition government to report on what the government should do to help the sick the unemployed and low-paid workers and retired people. And Sir William Beveridge made several recommendations in his report, the Beveridge Report, which was published in 1942, and this report actually became a bestseller. It flew off the shelves. The government were expecting this, as it was a, an official, official government report detailing what Beveridge thought the government should do in order to improve... Uh, public health. It wasn't really for the general public to read as such, as it would not normally be something that the public would want to read. In his Beveridge report, Sir William Beveridge recommended that the state should provide social, social security for everyone in society from cradle to grave. So, from when you're born to when you die, you should be provided with social security. And really, we're talking about the NHS when we're talking about this roughly the NHS. Beveridge said that there were five evil giants that he wanted to eliminate and these evil giants were squalor, ignorance, want, idleness and disease. Okay, so these were five evil that Beveridge wanted to eliminate and he detailed this in his Beveridge report. In July 1945 the general elections were held 
after World War II, and the Labour Party won the general election. Uh, Clement Attlee was uh, elected the Prime Minister in the July 1945 election. So, the Labour Party victory in 1945 sort of shows that after the war, people uh, people looked for improvements. They liked sort of the uh, liberalness, if you will, that was provided by the wartime coalition government during the war, but they knew that the Labour Party had a more liberal approach to politics. So people were looking for improvements, and that was shown by a change in government in the July 1945 election. People looked for improvements. So, now we're going to look at Bevan, who was the Labour Minister for Health, who introduced the National Health Service. So Bevan was the Labour Minister for Health, who introduced the NHS to Britain. Bevan believed that the same medical treatment should be provided for everyone, rich or poor, that was irrelevant. He said that everyone should receive equal treatment. Bevan said poor people should receive help when they become unwell. And even if they have no funds to cover the cost of treatments, uh, medical treatment should still be provided and this should be the same medical treatment as if they were very rich individuals. So, Bevan introduced the NHS. So, the National Health Service. It was introduced in 1948 and it was actually introduced on the 5th of July in 1948. The NHS provides health care for Whoops. Health care for all, and it's a government-funded service. It's a private organisation, but it's government-funded. And in this title, health care for in this sort of uh, wide title, health care for all, we've got ambulances, doctors, health centres, medicines, all that sort of thing. At one time, dental health was even provided, but today people have to pay for this because the cost was just enormous. So on the 5th of July 1948, hospitals were nationalised, health, health, health centres got there in the end, were set up, and there was a better distribu distribution of doctors around the UK as the NHS came into being. Uh, the way doctors were paid was also changed. Doctors were given a fixed salary when the NHS was introduced. So two things uh, sort of link very closely to the National Health Service. We're going to look at these now. So the Family Allowances Act was introduced in 1945 and that was a law to provide families with child benefit and child benefit was used was money given to uh, the parents of the parents or carers of a child to help raise and pay for the child. This was usually about five shillings a week and I've converted this on the National Archives website just to give you some sort of idea and Five shillings in 1945 would be equal to seven pounds in 2010. So that's the sort of money that was given a week per child to help families pay for their children. The National Insurance Act of 1911, although introduced before the NHS, sort of links closely to it. And the National, ins national Insurance is paid today and at the time by workers and their employees. It's a form of tax that's paid, and the and national insurance payments go towards the cost of state benefits. So national insurance payments help to pay for things like the NHS. So these are two acts that link very closely to the NHS. So the acceptance and opposition of the NHS. Here's, an Im here's some important information you need to be aware of. So the NHS mostly received an enthusiastic response. Yet there was that there were some people who opposed the new system. In the early ninety in early nineteen forty eight, the British Medical Organisation (BMA), which represents the medical profession, carried out a survey to see what doctors thought of the NHS, and fifty four percent of the doctors surveyed opposed the NHS in the survey. So more than half the doctors working in Britain said, we don't think NHS is good at it. So Bevan, the Labour Minister for Health who introduced NHS, realised he had a bit of work to do here. 
So Bevan's powerful personality helped to win round many over to his side, thinking that the NHS was a good idea. Bevan also gained the support of hospital consultants by promising them a salary and allowing them to treat private fee-paying patients in NHS hospitals. Bevan often said when he talked about this, he stuffed their mouths with gold. He stuffed doctors' mouths with gold in hope of persuading them that the NHS was a good idea and winning them round to his way of thinking. So he did this by his powerful personality, which was one thing. He promised them a salary, which was second, and he allowed them to treat private fee-paying patients out of hours in NHS hospitals. So when the NHS was reduced in on the 5th of July 1948, 90% of all doctors in the UK had enrolled, so Bevan had managed to win round nearly all doctors. So it was by 1948, later on in 1948, it was very successful. So what was the impact of the National Health Service? And we're going to look firstly at the impact of the National Health Service on women. So women's health has been made a priority and the, as a result of this the life expectancy of a woman has since risen. Women are no longer the main carers for family members and this causes them less worry and less stress. Years ago, particularly in poor families where proper treatment by medical professionals could not be paid for and afforded by the family, women were relied on to care for the sick in their families and this often caused them great stress which wasn't good for their own well-being. The National Health Service uh, took away this worry and stress from women by providing health care for all. Also, what was the impact on doctors? Well, doctors now work as teams which offer a wide range of services, for example, family planning, surgery, general practitioners, uh, accident and emergency, a whole load of different serv services. And the way doctors are paid has changed, the way doctors are paid, and they are given a salary now. So, what problems are faced by the NHS? Uh, well, the NHS is largely a good thing, but it still does face some rather major problems. So, you just need to be aware of a few of these problems. So, death rate has declined because a better uh, standard of care is now provided. People are living to an older age. This is good, but it means that the growing and ageing population is placing a strain on the available health care, and this adds to the already enormous cost of the NHS. New cures have since been found and uh, new diseases have uh, been discovered and this means that there is an increase in the cost of research and treating diseases so the cost is going up and up, becoming enormous. The NHS has an enormous cost this means that prescription charges and have since been introduced by successive successive governments and there are now charges for dental treatment. Years ago when the NHS were f was first introduced uh, people's medic medicines and prescriptions were paid for and people didn't have to pay for the medicines they were prescribed by their doctors. Now today if you go to the doctors you are made to pay for your prescriptions because otherwise the cost uh, of providing prescriptions would be enormous and it would cost the government too much so charges have been introduced to help fund this. Also when the NHS was first introduced uh, dental treatment was free but nowadays people have to see, pay to see their dentist, they have to pay for checkups, pay for fillings and stuff like that because the cost was just so massive it helps to pay, it helps to go towards the cost of the NHS. And also there are long waiting lists and long waiting times has led to some people wanted to take medical treatment outside the NHS. People have lost faith in the NHS. So, that's all the knowledge we need to cover for today's video. Here are four quick questions based on what we've looked at in this video today. Just pause the video here if you wish and have a go at these questions yourself. If not, carry on watching and we'll do them together. The answers then. Question one. What was the main recommendation made in the beverage report? Uh, the main recommendation was a state provision
of Social Security. And if you remember he said from cradle to grave, so from when people are born to when they die, throughout their lives. Next question, question two, who was Bevan? Well, Bevan was the Labour Minister for Health after the July 1945 election, so he was a Secretary of State and he introduced the National Health Service. Give two ways in which Bevan managed to per persuade doctors that the National Health Service was a good idea. Well, I can think of three. I'll tell you all three. Uh, well, he had a powerful personality. Uh, he offered them a salary. Offered them a salary. And allowed them to do private work in NHS hospitals. Give a problem faced by the NHS today. Uh, on this slide here, we've just looked at several of these problems. I'm just going to write one of them down. You could have any of the problems that are on this slide here. Uh, I'm just going to say the enormous cost. And it's played a bit of worry on the government. And some uh, governments might want to reduce how much of the NHS is actually free. Alright, so thank you for watching this video today, and there are the answers to the questions. This is actually the end of the topic, 20th century medicine, and it's actually the last video in Medicine Through Time. We've come to the end of the topic, finally. I'm sorry that in this video, video 4 and video 5, in this topic, there have not been many... Uh, many pretty pictures up in the top right hand corner of the slides because really I've just been trying to get the slides done as quick and as quick as possible and get the videos on the website as quick as possible for you for you guys to make sure they're available so I'm sorry about the pictures but I just wanted to get it done all right thanks for watching see you soon head over to the website revise gcsehistory.co.uk where you can go through any of the medicine through time videos again or watch videos on the american west topics Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again very soon.